Uh, are you ready to dig into the Word of God? Yeah. All righty, let's get ready. Uh, we have been talking about a mature mindset, and um, we're going to take that. Today I want to talk to you about the process towards progress. The process towards progress. And I'm going to take this as far as I can, and then, uh, you know, whenever we need to finish, we need to finish, but that's fine. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 13, and this has been our key verse, verse 11. And it says the following, dear brothers and sisters, are you a brother or a sister? All right, how about online? Uh, I bet you the same. He says, I close my letter with these last words. I don't even know last words are important. Last words are powerful. Last words we got to pay attention to. And then he goes on and he says, be joyful. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, hey, he's talking about you. Uh, turn to the other neighbor and said, hey, let the joy show up on your face right now. Come on, tell him. So be joyful. That is crucial. Be joyful. Now watch this. Grow to what? maturity, encourage who? Each other, live in harmony and peace, then the God of love and peace will be with you. It is a mouthful. It is an incredible uh, salutation, an incredible greeting. It's a mouthful uh, of the understanding. And uh, our focus has been on growing to maturity because this is our year of maturity. And, and it means to be strengthened and perfected, completed, made what it ought to be. And, and I don't know where, where you're at, but where I'm at, I want to be all that God intends for me to be. Uh, uh, I want to be in that place that God has for me, that, 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 that good place, that, that place even though on the natural it might not seem good, but we know that on God's economy, no matter where we go, no matter what we go through, that God is always present. He's an ever-present help even in a time of need even in times of confusion, even in times when I don't understand, even in times when I don't recognize, even in times when it's difficult, even in times where I struggle to catch my breath. It's in those times that I sense God's presence. And not only God's presence, I need God's peace. And if I'm going to get to the other side, and if I'm going to continue and finishing this race that I'm supposed to run, I'm going to need endurance. I'm going to need God's help. I'm going to need the impetus and the power of the Holy Spirit, not just on a momentary uh, place, but in a daily moment. Every moment I need God. I don't know where you're at this morning, but I know where I'm, I'm at, and I need God even right now. I need the presence of God. I need the peace of God. I, I, I need the knowledge that He is with me, that, that, that He walks with me through this process. Now, uh, it's crucial for us to understand, and, and this word maturity is, a, is an incredible deep word, and I want to give you uh, three more uh, kind of understandings of this word, and I'm going to give you three verses, and this is just for free. You don't pay for this, and uh, check this out. First Thess 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 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. I just spit it out right there. Now watch this. Watch what Paul writes. He says, Night and day we pray earnestly for you, asking God to let us see you again. And then listen to these words. To fill the gaps in your faith. To fill the gaps in your faith. That, that fill the gaps is exactly the same word as the word maturity. So maturity is that we fill the gaps. Maturity is the recog uh, recognition that we all have gaps. How many of you know we all have gaps? Now, I'm not talking about the Michael Strahan gap. I'm not talking about that kind of gap. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not mocking Michael. I mean, I love little Michael. Uh, 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 he was a New York Giant, so that's a whole other story. But uh, the, the reality is I'm not talking about that kind of gap. Are you with me, somebody? We, we all have gaps. Can you, can you say amen to that? We all have gaps. Do you have gaps in your life? Gaps just means that there are, there are some things that need to be filled in. There are some things that, that I need to learn so that I can take that next step in my journey. And, and Paul is saying here to the church in Thessalonica, he says, I want you to know that I'm praying. Why? So that your maturity, that, that God would, maturity is that you are filling in the gaps that you had. Maturity is not just saying, well, okay, i got gaps and I'm okay with it. It is the understanding that I have gaps, but it's the understanding that God puts me within a spiritual community to learn that God puts me with others. Why? So that they can help me fill the gaps in my life. So I can be accountable. So I can recognize that I am responsible for the growth in my life. That I'm responsible for where I'm at in life. That I'm responsible. Why? Because if you're at a certain age, then you made the decisions to where you are right now. Now, maybe some things have happened to you and some people have done some things to you and we understand that. But the reality is this, is that we've got gaps and those need to be filled. 
Now, let's, let's take that thought of filling gaps to another level. Watch this in Galatians 6 verse 1. Are you still with me? And, and we're going to find the same word, and we're going to find it for a different application, but it, it, it all brings us to an understanding of what it really means to be mature. Look at this, Galatians 6 verse 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit. Do I have any person in this room, online, outside, that live by the Spirit? Okay, can you give me a better amen than that? Amen. I know you're thinking Memorial Day, but just, uh, it's okay, I'll let you out here in a minute, and you can beat the Methodists to the restaurants, it's all right. So, uh, look at this. this, the Spirit should what? Look at this next word, should what? What's the next word? Restore. Say it out loud. Restore. Say it like you mean it. Restore. That word restore is the same as fill the gaps. It is the same as maturity to restore that person gently. So Paul is now writing to the church in Galatia, and he's, he's saying, hey, if, if there's someone uh, within the community of faith that has fallen, that have committed a sin and, and messed up, he says, for those of us who live by the Spirit, we should pick up the rocks and stone them. No, he says, for those of us who are spiritual, what should we do? We should fill the gaps. We should restore. We should bring them back to their previous state. And how do we do that? We do that, listen to the next word. That person how? How do we do it? Come on, work with me. I think it's on the screen, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to trick you. It's honestly, it's right there. And uh, is it? Yeah, it's there. Okay. You live by the Spirit, should restore that person how? Gently. Why is that? Because listen, he's going to warn us, but watch yourselves or you also may be what? So he says, when, you, when you're spiritually mature, not only do you fill the gaps, when you're spiritually mature, you, you, you're not only the filler of your own gaps, but you help to fill the gaps in other people's lives. He's wanting you to know that there is a connection here between the, 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 the faith community, that uh, we don't leave one another to just live on our own. We, we are there for one another. We strengthen one another, even if people have messed up. Even, you know, we don't disregard them. We don't toss them aside. This is not a, this, this, the church should be the furthest thing from cancel culture. We don't cancel anybody out. We love, and, and it doesn't mean we accept everything. It just means that we love people through whatever process they are in. Now, uh, uh, let me show you the next verse. Are you still, are you getting this? So this is the understanding of what maturity is. So I want to download this before we, before we move on. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, it's our key verse. Watch this. Rejoice. And then listen to the next phrase, how the NIV puts it. I love this. Strive for full what? Strive for full what? Restoration. Maturity is to strive for what? Full restoration. That means we want to be fully restored. What are we trying to get restored to? We must understand that Adam messed up. Jesus is the second Adam and he died in our place and he is now restoring that which we have lost. We've lost in, we've lost in the first Adam, but how many of you know we gain in the second Adam who is the last Adam, who is the eternal Adam? He is the firstborn from the dead. That's Jesus Christ. And through His resurrection and His death, we now have that power that lives on the inside of us. Why? So that we can fill the gaps, so that we can be fully restored, so that we can restore others. And now we come to the place and we understand that that's the mindset we ought to adopt. Now, if we can adopt this mindset, here's what I want you to get. One thought for this morning and get this real quick. A mature mindset, are you ready? Willingly submits to God's process. A mature mindset willingly submits to God's process. I'm going to say it again. A mature mindset willingly submits to God's process. That means that as I grow to maturity, as the gaps in my life is being filled, I recognize that I don't go from point A to point Z, or as you say, Z, I don't go from A to Z in one moment. How many of you understand that? Yeah. That there is a, there is a step by step process as I grow, as I fill the gaps, as others help me to be restored, as I grow to full restoration, this is a process, and that process never ends. 
on this side of eternity. And, and, and what we have to understand is that there's a lot of times during this, this process that, 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 we, that we are happy. And there are times and seasons during this process where we are down. And there are times and seasons during this process that we don't understand. And there are times, listen to me, having questions about the process is not the problem. The problem is when we stop during the process. It's not the fact that we don't always understand what's going on. I, I mean, I, if you have half a brain, how many of you know we don't always understand everything? Look at your neighbor say, I think he's talking about somebody I know right now. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't always, we, if, if we are really honest, we don't always have all the answers to everything. We don't have all the answers. We know who is the answer, and we know who ultimately will give us the answer. But we understand this, that God wants to restore me to that state which I've lost. He wants to bring me back to the original intent that God intends for me. He does that through Jesus, and as long as I'm in Jesus and walk in Jesus, then He builds my life and brings others into my life so that the gaps in my life can be filled. Why? That takes a process. Now, in this process, there are, there are going to be seasons where it's tough, where it's difficult. I want you to pay your attention to the screen, and uh, we wanna just, I just want to show you a little video about sometimes, and maybe, maybe this will speak to you about the process, and about as you're going through this process, how you have to hold on to what God says and hold on to the Word of God. Check this out. In a race, everyone runs. But only one person gets the prize. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Not much. You probably sit on your shelf for the next four years, but I really want you to have. Cat, he's perfect. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. Tomorrow speaking. Be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint.
let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. The key to finishing and finishing well is to keep on running. In, in the midst of the way that sometimes life can be twisted. And uh, a mature mindset willingly understands and submits that uh, I'm in a process. You're in a process. Uh, we, we, are all, we are all working through things and, and we are all in, in a place where we must understand that growth is not an automatic. Growth is a deliberate engagement of what God says. See, you're going to have to make some choices in your life. You're going to have to decide, do I really believe the Word of God? Do I really believe what God says? Period. Do, do I really believe that His Word is rich enough to help me to gain what I need to gain, to grow where I need to grow, and to remove what needs to be removed in my life? There's not one person within the sound of my voice, whether you be online, whether you're outside this building, or whether you're inside this room, that there are not some things that God has to chip away at you. There's not some things that need to be removed from you. There's not some things that, and I know that we call it things, but I think we need to call it what it is, some sinful things in our lives. There's some areas of disobedience. There's, there's some areas of non-surrender. There's some areas of non-submission. There's some areas where we have decided, guess what? I know better than God's Word. You say, Henny, which areas are those? Those are the areas that we refuse to submit. Those are the areas where it's the area in your marriage, where it's the area in your relationships, where you decide, well, I know better than God how to handle relationships. How many of you know you don't? Uh, I know better than God than how to handle my money. Let me just tell you something, you don't. I didn't get a big amen for the money one, so it's probably because it applies to 90% of you. But anyway, uh, the reality is, is that it doesn't matter what it is in your life. It has to be brought under the submission of God. And when you bring it under the submission of God, then it has to be submitted to the process of God. We, 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 are, so, we, uh, we are so quick to want to wanna just go through it. We are so quick to just want to, yeah, I just want to move from here to there. I, you know, I just want to get over it. I just want to get to the other side of it. But I want you to know know that gratitude is built in your life when you allow the Holy Spirit to build you in the places that is difficult, in the places that's hard, in the places where, where you feel like I can't carry on, where, in the places where you feel like, man, I, I can barely breathe right now. Those are the places that the Holy Spirit comes and He helps to lead you through that process. Growth is not an automatic thing. Growth is a process. There's a lot of people that think, well, okay, growth is through osmosis. How many of you know that right now in this moment you are not growing? Boy, you're quiet. Turn to your neighbor and say, I think it's because he's preaching real bad. That's why I'm not growing. It's not that. How many of you know, no matter how I preach, that's irrelevant to your growth? Now, I can, if I give you the right tools and I give you the right food, because growth is cultivation. Growth is not a feeling. Growth is not an emotion. Right now, what am I doing? I am helping you to grow, but you're not growing yet because growth only happens when you apply what you've heard. When you apply what you've heard, that starts the engine of growth because that's part of the process. Sitting here and hearing the Word of God, that's wonderful. Why? Because a lot of people don't even do that. And, and then taking it, but how many of you know uh, in 45 minutes or 40 minutes or however long, you know, maybe some Sunday I go 50 minutes and you freak out. But anyway, even, even in those Sundays, how many of you know that what am I doing? I'm giving you information. But unless that information becomes a revelation in your heart and mind, it will never become an application and it will never produce the transformation that is so desperately needed because the Word of God must not just be learned, the Word of God must be applied. Applied. It has to be applied where we are. There has to be a process that we are deliberately engaged in. At the Rock Church, we have what we call growth tracks. You say, anyone is a growth track? A growth track are, are, are practical steps. Are, these are, these are, uh, these are uh, um, uh, things that we teach, classes that we teach, but, uh, but it's, it's a track upon which you can run. 
Uh, we start with belong, and belong just means discovering that you are part of a church family. We, we are so disjointed nowadays, and we come and go, and we think of church like a Sam's Club. I pay my little dues once a year or, you know, once a month, and then I'm good because I do shop here. I mean, every six weeks, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, no, no, no. How many of you understand that you cannot have a healthy family if you do not know one another? You cannot have a, f a healthy family if you do not know the needs of one another. You cannot have a healthy family when you do not pray for one another. You cannot have a healthy family when you do not engage one another. You cannot have a healthy family when you do not do life together. You cannot do life on your own. You cannot have, you know, your little, your little tower, your little castle, and, you know, you have your little moat and you release the crocodiles when you get home at night and you don't want to get any phone calls. You don't want to talk to anybody. I'm tired. I work hard. I don't want to hear another thing. I want you to know that might all be true and you might be dealing with, but until you engage the process of God, you'll never be able to grow and fill the gaps in your life. So God puts you where? He puts you in a family. Why does God put you in a family? So within that family, the problem that we have today when he talks about family is that families are so disjointed. Families are, 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 are so dysfunctional. You might as well say amen. I'm talking about your family. Hello. Some of you don't want to say amen because you're sitting next to your dysfunction. I understand that. The reality is this, why, why are we all dysfunctional? Because we all have sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. So there, there is some kind of dysfunction, even in the most wonderful families, there are some kind of dysfunction that we have to be willing to bring under the authority of what God says so that we can discover we're a church family. If you have not gone through the belong growth track, then I'm asking you why? Why have you not taken the next step? Because it's part of the journey that God has for you. We have another growth track called Grow. And what that is, is discovering my spiritual maturity. It's, to, it's the things, the tools that we teach you practically on how to have a prayer life, how to study the Word, how to know that what we are believing, what the Word of God says, and what is true and what is not. It helps you to be established. It is part of the process. Let me ask you, have you engaged that? Have you gone through that process? Are you willing to take a little 45 minute, you know, once a week and go through that process? Or you say, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm too busy. Can I tell you what happens? You must build the reservoir before the storm comes, not build a reservoir when the storm is pouring down around you. You must build the relationships before the challenge comes, not build the relationship when the challenge comes. Are you with me, somebody? That is, it's called process. The thing is, is that we don't, we, we say we want the growth. We say we want God to fill the gaps, but then we refuse to engage in the process that God has put us. If God has not placed you at the Rock Church, if this is not your church, and this is not where God has for you, then I want you to know you got to find your people. you got to find your tribe. You've got to find the people that you need to do life with. You've got to find the people that you can grow and engage in the process and not have a spiritual arrogance that says, well, I've heard that before. My question to you is not, have you heard it before? My question is not even, did you preach it before? My question to you is, do you live it now? I paid a 50 bucks before service. I said... Please say it loud at this point. <laughs> Dion, you did great. Remember the other one we talked about, so it's coming. But we have to engage the process to fill the gaps. Why do you continually fall over the same junk? Because you're not filling the gaps. Why are you continually making the same mistakes? Why? Because you're not filling the gaps. You see, we think moments of reprieve means that I've been completely made whole. But moments of reprieve just is moments of grace that God is giving us to catch our breath because it's going to come again. The challenge is going to come up ahead. There's going to be challenges. And in those moments is when I know, do I have my roots down deep enough within the family of God, with the people of God, in the process of God, so that I know that I'm mature enough to handle it and not give out on God and give out on my faith just because I'm going through a tough time. Can I have a weak amen for that? It's because things don't work out the way that I anticipated to work out. It's called process. I've got to be in it. 
Maturity says I'm willing to submit to the process of God even though it doesn't always make natural sense. Because how many of you know God's process doesn't make natural sense? We say, well, we're so busy. And God says, okay, I want you to serve. I want you to serve somewhere. Say, but God, I don't have the time to serve. God says, I tell you what, if you honor me in this, it'll be amazing what I'll do. I'll redeem your time. Amen. And suddenly you find out, wow, I, I still can do some of the things that, that I need to do. And, and I'm able to serve. And you find that out in money. When God says, if you want to have, you got to give. That makes no sense to us. How in the world do I give away the thing I need in order to have the thing I want? And God says, hey, this is how you do it. You become generous. You honor me in your tithes and offerings because you are part of the house. That means there's responsibility. There is accountability. It's got nothing to do with a one-time offering. It's got to do with a lifestyle of generosity, knowing that I'm alive because of God. I have a job because of God. God is faithful to me. He has worked me through the process. And what that means is whether I keep my job or don't keep my job, my reliance is not on my my job, my reliance is not on the state. My reliance is not on the federal government. My reliance is on the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who will supply all of my needs. And I'm getting on his economy, not my economy. I'm getting on his plan, not my plan. I'm engaging his process, not my mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Discovering, and we have another and another growth track, it's called Serve and Reach. And that's about discovering your ministry and your life mission. Do you know that God has given you a ministry? Do you know that God has given you a mission? Not just your mission, but God's mission for you. If you haven't discovered that yet, you need, to, you need to discover that. You need to learn that. You need to be able to understand that. The reality of filling in the gaps means the willingness to engage in the process that God lays before you. The, the, the reality of, of growing to maturity and the reality of getting to full restoration is not a matter of a one-time prayer, an amen, a hallelujah, a benediction. You know, we, we, we come in and we sing a do it, we go out and smoke a cigarette, and it's all good. It, it, it's greater than that. How many of you understand that? It is the digging in of your life. It is the, it's the digging in of your roots. It is the planting in the house of God. It is the taking the nourishment from the Holy Spirit. It's taking the Word of God as something that absolutely feeds my life. It is my food. It is my nourishment. It is my necessity. I have to have the Word of God. It's not just a convenience. It's not just something that I have a Bible app because I'm a Christian. It's greater than that. This is my life source. Your words to me are spirit and they are life. I must hear the Word of God first before I hear anybody else's Word. I must listen to the voice of God before I listen to any other voice, including my own. See, it's a desperate reliance in the words that God speaks because that is my sustenance. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Your Word is life to my flesh and strength to my bones. Your Word, O Lord, is forever settled in the heavens. I heard the Word, and it made me glad, and I rejoiced in it. I ate the Word, and it was sweet to the taste, but it was bitter in the stomach. Why is that? Because the Word of God starts sweet, but then it starts the process of changing what needs to be changed. Everybody in the church wants change, but nobody is willing to pay the price for it. Everybody wants a revival, but nobody is willing to get on their knees and pray for it. Everybody wants a miracle, but nobody wants to pick up a towel and wash the feet of those who might not be worthy. Everybody wants to be great, but nobody wants to do the things that doesn't seem great. Everybody wants to be somebody when they don't understand that the greatest somebody became nobody so that we, the nobodies, could become somebodies through him. Christ stripped himself, made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a servant, humbled himself like a man to the point of death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. 
exaltation in God's kingdom can only come through the willingness of you and I being willing to engage the process of God by submitting ourselves to the word of God and the will of God. My question to you this morning as we come to a landing is this. Are you willing to adopt and change according to God's way or do you say, no, Henny, it's only going to be my way? Are you willing to hear the word of the Lord this morning? Because it's a penetrating word. It's a, it's a short word, but it's a challenging word. Why? Because I must understand that it is a process. God's moving me from one place to another place. And when I move from one place to another place, there are things that I'm going to have to lay bare. There are things that I'm going to have to open up to. There are things that I'm going to have to change. You cannot have a new life until you have a changed mind. And until you change your mind about certain things, and I'm not talking being so open-minded until, uh, until your brain falls out, but I'm saying that you've got to open up your heart and your mind to the Word of God. You see, we open ourselves up to everything else, and we put the seeds of the world in our minds instead of putting the seed of the Word in our minds. See, when you cultivate... Once you put the seed of God in your mind and in your heart, there, there's a cultivation factor that happens. There's a building factor that happens. There's, a, there's, that, there's that working that happens. Why? Because there is a weeding and seeding that needs to happen in all of us. Some of you are full of weeds. Some of you smoke weed. You say, you are. somebody just said they don't inhale. Well, then what's the point? We just had some people join the service. <laughs> Whoa, that's my kind of church. Man, now I know why they get so high during the worship. <laughs> process. Are you willing to engage God's process? Are you willing? If, if not now, then when? If not this moment, we have come through this whole last year and a half where there was challenges, where it was difficult for some. Some of you have lost family members. Some of you have lost children. Some of you have lost moms, lost dads. Some of you have been in deep, deep places of pain. But now, what now? What now? What do we do now? We must believe that if we do not engage God's process, we'll never to get to God's purpose. Because God's process leads to God's purpose. And God's purpose leads to God's power. And God's power leads us to transformation. See, you cannot change by yourself. You've tried. You've tried. And the moment you take the pressure off when you try to change something, then guess what? You go right back to the same old behavior. Am I right? I mean, the moment you say, okay, I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. Uh, maybe not this week. <laughs> right? Because we try to force ourselves to bring to a change instead of submitting ourselves and allowing the Holy Spirit to empower us to make the change that's necessary. I don't know where you're at today, but I just want to ask you very simply on this Memorial Day weekend, are you willing to submit to God's process? And God's process does not look like yours. It is different, but it's time to dig and get the roots of some things in our lives out and put the seed of God's word in and then marinate on that seed and allow the word of God to have the final authority in our lives. As a matter of fact, the word of God should be the only authority in our lives, not just the final one, but the only one, because it's through his word. The entrance of your words give life. And we are looking for life in places where we'll never find it. We are bowing down to idols who'll never give to us what we so desperately desire. We are holding on to processes that cannot produce change. And we are holding on to identities that only leads to regret. Instead of holding on to what God says about us. And understanding who he is and what he has made for us. Available in the church so that we can grow through his grace. Let's bow our heads this morning. And I want to pray with you and for you. Just to let you know, I, that was just the introduction of the message, but I can't, can't go any further. But I, I just want to, I want to challenge you today. 
If you're saying, Henny, you know, I, I, I want to engage God's process. And, and maybe you've been around church for a long time. I, I, I don't know your journey. I don't know where you've been. I don't know where you slept. I don't know what you snorted. I don't know what you smoked. I don't know who you've been with. But I know this. God's grace is bigger than any mistake you can ever make. And right now in this room, right now for those online, right now for those outside, God's grace is available to you. And if this morning, if you say, Henny, I need to embrace the grace of God in my life. I want to embrace the process of God in my life. I, I don't always understand it, but I know I need it. I know that Jesus made a way for me. And I want to accept Him as the one to be in charge. I want to submit my life completely. No, no more of this little in, a little dab will do me, a little bit of religion now and again. No, I want all that God has for me. I want to embrace Jesus Christ as Lord, meaning in charge of my life. If that's you online, if that's you in the building, if that's you outside, I want to pray with you. If that's you, would you just pop your hand up and let me see it? Thank you, thank you. Just pop it up. Thank you, 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 thank you. Back there, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see that. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Online, you do the same. God bless you. Outside, you do the same. God bless you. Thank you. I see that. God bless you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. There's no magic in this prayer. It's just a way of submitting your heart and mind to the Lord. And I want us to pray this right now. Would you, would you pray with me? I'm going to encourage everybody online. Would you pray with us outside? Would you pray with us? And in this room, would you pray with us? Just say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. And I acknowledge that I need you. I ask that you would fully restore my life. That you would fill all the gaps. That through your grace and through your mercy... I will submit my life to you. And from this day, I want to follow you. I want to be a Christ follower. Thank you for dying for me on the cross, shedding your blood so I can be forgiven. I receive your grace and your mercy right now. Heal me from the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you believe that, give the Lord a clap offering that he is worthy of today.